Hey folks, this is Andy Alonso, aka Colonel Noodle, and uh, having a blast here with Amber the Fangirl, who wants to know everything about the Colonel. <laughs> so I'm here to tell all. Enjoy. Hi guys, I'm over here. Welcome back to another episode of In Conversation with ATF. Now this episode is a very special episode because this is a guest who I've wanted to speak to for the longest time. Uh, he's a musician, he's based in America, and he has done um, one voice acting job, um, and it's for one of my favourite video games of all time. I wonder who it could be. Is he there? Where are the noodles? Where are the noodles? <laughs> you want the noodles? We'll get you some noodles. Yeah, he's always a kernel noodle in program two. My guest is Andy Alonso. Welcome. <laughs> well, hello. Thank you for Hi. having me. You're welcome. Well, it's such an honor to have you on my show because a lot of the cast of Parappa has not really been identified. I mean, it really did take some tracking down to find you and uh, Ethan Newbanks, who I previously spoke to, because um, your names were spelt wrong in the credits. Yep. Yep. I, I had them do that because I'm on the witness protection program. Oh. No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely believe you for a second. I, I know uh, Ethan was Ethan N. Banks and then you were just Andrew Alonzo and Alonzo yeah. that was a Z. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the, the crazy thing about this character is that I did that reading, you know, however many years ago that was, 20 years ago. Uh, the game was released in 2001. I think right yeah yeah, yeah. so 2002, 2002. it was it was fun it was a great experience I had a blast That's great. and then I kind of just left it there and then five years ago let's huh. see what are, what are we looking at I gotta get this it's the credit I'm trying to find oh really. is it the the mil misspelt name yeah you can't really see it Andrew Alonso is Colonel Noodle everybody spells it wrong oh man yeah, yeah. but but anyway, about five years ago, uh, a student of mine yeah. mentioned the game, uh -huh. and, uh, a music student of mine. And, uh, yeah. and I said to him, well, hey, you know the character Colonel Noodle? He says, of course. I said, well, that, that's my voice there. <laughs> and the fella nearly fell off the chair. And then for, five, for the last five years, I've had students mention it um my older boy who who lives in new york he's been getting messages from people asking are you andy alonso you know colonel noodle it's it's kind of weird to me how it just out of nowhere people are, are, are you know bringing it up all of a sudden so yeah indeed yeah i think it all started because Parappa obviously started getting attention last year, especially because of the whole uh, Daffy Duck, Parappa, I slammed my peanut from the car door meme. And that was everywhere. And then there was a Batman one that said, this is where I watched my parents die, Parappa and stuff like that. That's how I got the whole uh, Parappa hyperfixation. Okay. Uh, uh, like a train ride. That was quite fun. Yeah. So uh, I, I've got Parappa 2. I've got Parappa 1, Num Jam Alami for the original PS1. I've got Parappa Plush on my bed. I'm just, I've just gone Parappa mad. <laughs> It's just such well, I, I made a habit of asking students, younger students, um, hey, did you ever play this game? Students that I that I know are gamers. Yeah. I'd ask them and I'm amazed. I had a 14 or 15 year old uh, student sitting here with her mom yeah. in my teaching studio. And I just I mentioned that game. I said, hey, let me ask you. She said, oh, yeah, I love that game. I said, oh, boy. So I, I mentioned the character and both her and her mom were like, no way. <laughs> wow. Oh. Was, oh, man, was I laughing at that. I wouldn't expect the mom to get on it as well, but, uh, you know, <laughs> fans of all ages, I suppose. Yeah, because my brother's a huge fan of it and he's like in his, he's coming up to turning 30. Wow. Crazy how people like age really fast. I mean, I turned 18 in February, so. 18. Well, I've got you and your brother beat by quite a bit. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I presume that. <laughs> so, honestly, I mean, with the whole, I'm not sure if you've seen the video, it's just simply called Chinese. Um, People have been making memes of Colonel Noodle, and it's in the song, is his song where he says, like, Chinese, Italian, Thai, or Jamaican. Yeah, and sure. he just goes, uh, Chinese, Chinese, anything goes, even Chinese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. man. 
Wow, you remember it better than I do. Oh, yeah. Literally, it's crazy the amount of people who have, you know, put it on YouTube and stuff like that. And just to be talking with someone who I've been trying to reach for the past since nearly a year, because I started Like It Proper one year next month. Okay. So, yeah. Well, so, um, it's, it's funny the way it came up with that first student. And again, this this might be even more than five years at this point. But the way it came up is when I do music lessons, uh, either on guitar or, ba- or bass, I encourage my students to improvise. Yeah. So this one fella was playing bass and he played a bass line that reminded me of that main theme. You know that main bass theme that that uh, Colonel Noodle. Yeah. Da, 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 that's it. Da, 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 yeah. So he da, 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 he played a line, and that's where I mentioned it. I stopped him for a moment, and I said, "I said, wow, you wouldn't know this." I said, "But that line sounds like." And then I I told him, and he said, "Of course I know that," and that's that's where that all unfolded, and yeah. That is yeah. so cool. I need to try and fix this crack in my headphones. Be fair, sorry. <laughs> fix your ears yeah yeah i need to fix that i actually spoke to a uh a really big uh casting director uh, she was a casting director she's uh happily retired now um i'm not sure you might uh you might not have heard of her but you probably will know a lot of stuff she's voice directed her name is andrea romano she's voice directed a lot of things like the original animaniacs tiny toon adventures batman the animated wow. series wow. all the dc animated series and just all, a lot of Disney afternoon shows and she's just wow she only retired like a few years ago and I spoke to her on like a galaxy con where you like you know you have a video chat with someone she emails me afterwards and says she's ordered a similar pair of cat headphones I'm like oh nice <laughs> okay okay wow <laughs> like, so I'm, I'm flat you inspired a legend to, I did uh, indeed yeah, yeah I'm, the I'm gonna have to, me. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to get a pair now oh yeah. uh, yeah. yeah, you'll have to try and like custom design them to make them look like Colonel Luna, like spray paint in green or the big afro, black, the big, big afro. I'll, I'll look a little big afro and then just like you know, <laughs> just like, right in there, yeah. ready is big afro. That'd be so cute. Oh my god, oh man, that's funny. But I've got to say, it was very hard to track you down. I mean, I, I spent years not years when i seen years <laughs> i was spending like months just like trying to find you and okay. then someone said on uh, a video saying, Oh, yeah, um. The guy voice Colonel Noodle uh, taught me bass. So I was like, okay, so he's a bass what? player. What? So I can't remember who it was. I can't I have to try and find that. Well, I, well, I wonder if it's this fella then. It probably might be. I don't know. I have to wow, try and find yeah, because he was a bass student. I should get in touch with him and say, hey, did you give me a... Try and look him up. And uh, I was like, hmm. And then okay. I and I spoke to Ethan uh, Ebanks. Um, and then he was like, he recommended someone who produced the, the second proper game. I can't remember his name. But I looked on his friends list and I found Andy Alonso. I was like, could this be the, the guy? And then it was. I was like, there you go. Uh oh. Oh my God. <laughs> this, this character will follow me to the grave, I think. Yeah. Sick yep. of- <laughs> it's funny how many people, you know, mention to me, oh, wow. Yeah. Andy Alonso that. ate noodles instead of sweets. And let me tell you something. The crazy thing is, I truly do love noodles. Really? I eat, now I'm going to use the American pronunciation pho, which is uh, properly, I think the pronunciation is pho, actually. The is it Vietnamese, pho? I think so, yeah, sure. I think. Ooh. Vietnamese noodle soup. I eat that at least twice a week. I'm crazy for noodles in real life. There you go, the man said it himself. All right, we can end this interview now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but, oh my gosh, I'm just still gushing, like, sitting here, and you're thinking, oh my gosh. It's like, true. It's I know, true. I know, yeah. yeah. I'm crazy for noodles. Yeah, like, just talking about it right now. Oh, you're making me want to have it. Oh, yeah, noodles are the bomb. Isn't that what he said? <laughs> noodles are the flow, noodles the are the flow. <laughs> I can't do a good uh, Colonel Lou's impression. I suppose like you got to get it like right up in like your nose and stuff. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you where that came from. Yeah, I was gonna say I'd love to find yeah. out how you got the role, how you made up the voice. You know. Oh, okay, so the, the engineer, the the recording engineer, who was on the session, uh, we went to school together, mm-hmm. and 
at the cafeteria, I would do impressions of our professors and such. I, I was always a goofball. So, I, you know, I, at dinner, I'd always try to make people laugh and I'd do impressions, whatever. So anyway, he calls me one morning. Hey, what are you doing today? He asks. Oh, not much. I have a job tonight uh, that I have to go play. I said, but I'm, I'm free. What's up? And he said, I want you to, he said, do you still do those goofy voices you used to do at the cafeteria? I said, I don't know, I guess. He said, well, I want you to come over and read. So I show up and that's what they wanted uh, folks to read for that game. So they showed me a few characters. And I remember trying out some voices and, you know, the reaction was kind of lukewarm. And then they showed me the picture of, Colonel Noodle. Okay. So here's where the voice came. Was it the one in his Berg uniform or the one with him and the red mask and the and the black outfit? It was the black outfit without the mask. Ah, yes, yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. yes. And that's what inspired the voice. And I'm going to get myself into trouble with a family that we're very good friends with. Here's here's what happened. I looked at this photo, this picture mm -hmm. of, this, of Colonel Noodle, yeah. and it reminded me of one of my son's, I shouldn't say one of, my son's dearest best friend when they were little. It looked, except for the hair, it looked, if the hair were red, it would have been perfect. It looked just like my son's friend. Now, this young fella had a, a voice. Yeah, coming from. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're literally just on, behind, you are literally listed as our Andrew Alonso behind the voice actors, yeah. and your yeah. only role is Colonel Noodle. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, the young boy that Colonel Noodle reminded me of, my, my son's friend, had a very high pitch. And I think he probably had allergies, hay fever. So he was he was always congested. And when he talked, he would he sound like this. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Alonso, can I come over and play today? There would be, there would be a message on our machine. You know, we'd hear it. He'd want to come over and play with our boy. You know, yeah. uh, hi, this is. I'm not going to use his real name. Okay, I'll, I'll call him Joe. Oh, what do you know? His name is Joe. Okay. So anyway, no, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, all right, off the pause of recording. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll call him Joe. So Joe would leave a message, you know, and we'd hear his voice on the machine. And it, it kind of reminded me, his voice reminded me of uh, Tommy from the Rugrats. Oh, yeah. yeah. So watched by the wonderful E.G. Daily. Yes. Indeed. Pretty, pretty. This kid had it spot on, but it was his natural voice. Oh. You know, so when I was when I was shown that picture of Colonel Noodle, it reminded me of Joe. Joe. But, <laughs> so I initially did Joe and uh, the two representatives from the game who were there just started. They, they couldn't stop laughing. And then they described the character to me as being angry. You know, because my son's friend was the sweetest little kid. He had that high nasally voice, but he was such a nice kid. You know, and yeah. then, you know, it was described to me that he was this angry. Well, to be fair, he was sweet in the first half. Of the sure. Game. It was like to proper. Sure. We, we, we only serve noodles here, not burgers. Sure. He's like, no, I want a hamburger. <laughs> He's like, I want a hamburger. I want to speak to your manager. And then the manager's dead. And then he just comes to life. And then the first one begins. <laughs> Literally, let me speak to your manager before it was a thing. You know. <laughs> well, I, I decided, you know, all right, let me tweak the voice mm -hmm. to sound angrier. So, you know, put a little, put a little, you know, dirt in there. Yeah. And, uh, and that was it. And, um, it's like you said, it's definitely up here. And then I don't know how to describe it in professional terms, but it's also, it's kind of like you have to hollow out your, uh, you know, your voice box, I guess. Cause it, it's, it's kind of a, it, there's not a lot of mid range to it. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, you kind of have to soften, soften it up, you know, and then bring it up here. Mm-hmm. And then add the add the aggravation and the anger and all that and, and scream. Oh boy, I spent three hours in that session. When it was done, my neck was killing me. Because what I didn't realize is I was getting into character. I was hunching over and I was scrunching up my face the whole time. And oh, when it was done, I was like, okay, anybody have ibuprofen? Oh. Yeah. So oh. that's the the story of the Colonel Noodle voice. Did you ever play the game when it came out when it came out? Well, here's the deal. My my son did, yeah. And I would sit and I would sit behind my son and his friends as they played it. And oh boy, would I I laugh. Would I by the time it came out, I mean I understand there are gamers who are my age and, and, you know, it's a big deal. But for me, I mean, I go back to Atari Pong. You don't even know what that is. Of course I do. I know all the retro video right? game consoles. Ping pong. Yeah. That's how, okay. I, that's how like I, I go back to yes. where that came. So anyway, for, for me, when gaming was, was exploding, when it was first coming out, Mm-hmm. Oh boy, I was I was already neck deep into playing music and I even though I'm not an athlete, I love being outside playing some kind of sport, you know, or at least hurting myself trying to. Yeah. And uh so anyway, I never did get into the the gaming thing, but yeah, I would watch my my boy and his friends play it and boy would I laugh hearing that that voice back. In fact, the fellow that I patterned the voice after. I was going to ask, did you ever yeah. play it? He'd, he'd be there playing it with them, and I never said anything. Oh, no. Did he not, did he not catch on? <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> you know, do you still know him to this day? Because I'm Oh, he, let me tell you, he's, he's blossomed into such a handsome, you know. Oh, it doesn't uh, sound like that anymore. Oh. Uh, no, 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 no. It's funny. Now that he's older, he has this this deeper voice, but, but as a impish little kid, you know, he had that, vo- Oh, we loved it. It was adorable. Oh, it was so sweet. what a cute little kid he was. And uh, so anyway, I guess I owe him some royalties or something. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Now um, that I've spilt the beans. Oh yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been in touch with any of the, of your fellow cast members from Parappa too? Um, you know what? There is one fella that I know was there to read, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's on the game. If you tell me, I can check. Well, I mean, I can't check. Well, I mean, I know everyone off my heart who voices who in the game. So, okay, I'll give you a first name. Okay. I won't give you a second name in case he wants to keep it hush. Okay. In case the FBI is after him as well. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Tommy, is there a Tommy on there? No, <laughs> no, nope, not at all. There's a Tom, a Thomas, or a Tommy at all on that. No, okay, wow. I thought he'd be a shoe in because he actually has done uh voiceover work and he's a very popular uh vocalist on the professional scene. A lot of bands, is he? Of name. Yeah, so I, I thought he would be on there, but uh. Wow. So yeah, I don't I don't know if I've I don't know of the musicians that I saw there at the reading, I don't know who made it onto the game. Mm. Well, I can read you the credits if you if you wish if you wish to. I mean I'm more than happy to because you're talking to the best person. <laughs> <laughs> um so we have Dread Fox as Parappa. Um he's on Facebook. Um I, I have spoken to him a few times. I'm trying to get him on my show still. Okay. Um, well he's, he says John Simpson the third AK Dread Fox. And then you've got Armstead Christian, who unfortunately we lost in 2016, who was Papa Parappa and uh PJ Berry. Um John James as General Potter, Sonny Funny's dad. Lee Alamar as Sonny Funny, who replaced Kenya Hathaway from the previous game. Wow, so many of these names sound familiar. You know what it is in, in the business that I'm in? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I work for an agency, okay? I actually work for a couple of them. And it's basically what you would call cattle call. They, they call a number of musicians 
to play a job together. Uh huh. You know what I mean? You yeah. might not see some of those musicians for another six months or another year. You know, yeah. uh, some musicians you constantly work with. But anyway, so some of these names that you're mentioning, I may have very well worked with them again. You know, that's why, because yeah. some of them you mentioned, it's kind of tweaking my memory a little bit. And I'm thinking, wow, did I work with them or is that someone I owe money to? Hmm. <laughs> oh, it's just that. That's someone um, I owe a pair of cat ears to. <laughs> you know, better pay in cat ears, you know, five pairs of cat ears for, you know, the exchange of contact of one of your fellow <laughs> cast members. Who else have we got? Uh, Sara Ramirez is Lamy. Um, they're a, uh, they they are are a big voice actor in LA because they voiced I think the Queen on Sophia the First a big Disney Junior uh, uh show, um so they are on the, they are on the scene quite a bit still. Uh, Shannon White is Katie Cat who replaced Michelle Burks um who actually moved from New York so she wasn't able to do Parappa two. Um, okay. Michelle passed away in twenty sixteen. Uh, I. Um, Ethan, of course, Ethan Eubanks sure. as Dave Burger. Um, Rue as well, MC Rue, what to be. He, he actually uh hosts a, uh, a, on a radio station in Tokyo now. Nice, yeah. Nice. And he grew up in LA, he grew up so the first days of his life in LA. Was the, was the entire game recorded in New York though? I believe so, because okay. I, I spoke to Ethan. He said he recorded his lines from New York. Uh, let's have a look. Dean Bowman, um, Kimberly um, Hassel, also known as Queen Amina, uh, Freedom Bremner, and then, of course, there's Hugh. Um, Freedom said that he recorded his lines in New York. Okay. Um, I've t- I've spoken to everyone apart from uh, Lee and or Leah, Lee and uh, Shannon. Um, I haven't been able to reach those. I still can't find a contact for them. Um uh, Dean, I've um I've tried to arrange an interview. Uh, Kimberly also trying to arrange an interview with um but, uh, slow progress, but we're getting there. So yeah, I suppose I am pretty much in contact with all the people who did that. But I think for okay, this is probably not going to happen ever. But what if we did like a reunion for the twentieth anniversary of Parappa, like a little Zoom call recording? Oh, I, I'd, I'd be into it for oh, sure. I get dread. I'd get Rue. Um, I get freedom. Uh, I get Dean, um, Ethan, Kimberly, um, and you, of course. I'd have to have some cough drops ready in case I'm asked to do the voice, because. <laughs> yeah, well, after, well, I mean, everyone's pretty, yeah, because everyone's in New York apart from Rue, who's in Tokyo. So I suppose, I suppose, what what type? Well, I know you're not in New York. You're in, is it Philadelphia or Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. Yep, I'm in Central Pennsylvania, but I do work uh quite a bit in new york i still have one foot always in new york ah i see as as a working musician if you're trying to do it for a a living you know it's hard not to you know you you need to have a new york a big city connection yeah yeah Mm. Uh, a a lot of the, the work is happening in new york new jersey you know or we get uh flown to or we have to drive to let's say Boston or Miami or whatever. Yeah. Let's you have know. a look when Prepper 2 actually came out. Let's just have a look real quick. I think that was 2001. Ah, well, was 2001, so we have missed the 20th. <laughs> yeah, um, right? I, I, is it tw- uh, 2001? Uh, yeah, it was released in Japan in 2001. It was released everywhere else in 2002. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, North America, okay. January 21st. Um, Europe, April 5th. Um, and then Australia, 4th of December. Okay. Yeah, we technically missed it, but I suppose we could still do a reunion if you don't. <laughs> that would actually be really cool, though. Like, of course, we'd have to plan it because obviously I'm in England and then everyone else is on like the central coast and then Rue's over there in Tokyo. So, um, I'd have to get an outfit then. I'd have to get the glasses. Everyone and... has to cosplay as their character. <laughs> and then I'm just there. I have a proper beanie in my drawer over there. But, um, of course. Nice. Nice. I get it. But, you know, <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Oh my gosh. Andy, I, I am, this is probably my hundredth time saying this, but I am in such, oh, just speaking to you. Um, well, I'm happy to oblige. Yeah. That's great. What cartoons yeah. did you, oh, sorry. What's that? No, good. What cartoons did you grow up with? Oh what? boy. Oh boy. I, I, I lived 
for the Bugs Bunny stuff. And I, but I'm talking the old Bugs the Bunny. The Mel Blank Bugs Bunny. Oh, man. Yeah. Th- those were incredible. You know, it's crazy because I remember my younger boy, I remember he watched some of those older ones, the ones that I grew up on. And then he watched some of the 70s and 80s era one. Yeah. And it impressed me in that he said, Dad, he said, I like the older ones. I said, well, what do you like about it? And I'm sure he was talking about the visual. He said, they're warmer. Yeah. I mean, the artists really took time on those backgrounds. Yeah. You know, then in the 70s and 80s, it kind of became just this flat, very one-dimensional, pale colors, you know. But those older cartoons and Mel Blanc, what a genius. Wow. What a genius. And I'm, I'm sure he was doing that before there was proper overdubbing. So when he would do multiple voices, he would have to, I'd imagine, just go from one character Right, right into yeah. the next. Next line is back to wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a talent there. Yeah. Everyone calls him the man of a thousand voices. Yeah. How about it? How yeah. About yeah. It? yeah. Indeed. I think uh, Frank Walker follows really nicely in his footsteps as the second man of a thousand voices. <laughs> well, it's funny because a lot of us as as kids, we would try to do. You know that that inspired us to try to do those voices yeah sure sure and trying to think what other what other cartoon uh what was a big deal when i was a kid besides bugs bunny scooby-doo yeah (laughs) i'll tell you what bothered me about scooby-doo are you ready (laughs) are you ready okay this is this is weird i know it's one of my idiosyncrasies but nothing's weird in this universe they the cast would be running yeah and you'd see a certain background. Let's say it was a grocery store and a bookstore. Yeah. And then they'd run a little more and you'd see the same grocery store and the same bookstore. And that would Just happen. Pizza. Yeah. Oh, man. And as a kid, oh, I'd sit there and go, well, wait a minute. What are they running in circles? Are they going around the block? What's going on here? That so. actually reminds me. Um, when um, my, this is this is this is like really, you know, like off topic but basically you have to bear with me because it's hard for me to uh you know type when you know looking basically uh there's a japanese uh, animation company called toby animation um and i know a lot of like cartoons like scooby-doo and stuff were outsourced to like sometimes like uh J- japan like japan animation mm-hmm. um, uh, companies um there was an episode of transformers that was animated by uh toby well pretty much most of them were animated by toby um but Oh my gosh, it was dreadful as in animation. Basically, someone got the layers mixed up of cells. So, oh no! After I have, I have the clip. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. Okay, can I? Can I go? Can I get? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. This is good. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Let's get the spectacles nope. here. No sound because I want Hasbro to sue my ass. Uh, give me a moment. Right, this is this is why you need to watch what you're doing. How no one notices this is beyond me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Unbelievable! Unbelievable! <laughs> like yeah, the the cells when we were kids. No oh, one man. noticed. Man, the the artwork. I've I've watched some documentaries on the making of like the old Disney stuff. Yeah. And wow, I mean th- those were legit artists, you know, drawing that stuff. That's yeah. It's a you know, I guess it's what you'd say it's a lost art, but yeah. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Well, let me check my schedule here because today I do have students coming. So I'm going to have to prepare for that soon. Well, that's okay, because the remaining meeting time right now is 4 minutes and 14 seconds. Oh, all right. On the top of the screen. <laughs> yeah, Zoom right. introduced a stupid feature where um, uh, meetings can only be up to 40 minutes unless okay. you buy Zoom yep. premium. Um, sure. Sure. So 
Sure. Well, I'll tell you what, I am, I, I'm just thrilled by this kind of renaissance of Colonel Noodle. Because like I said, I did the reading. I had fun with it. I enjoyed watching my boy play it with his friends. And then it kind of just drifted into the background. And then in the past number of years, here are people mentioning to me, you're Colonel <laughs> Noodle. <laughs> mania, move out of the way. It's proper mania now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Oh. Man, Andy, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you today. Uh, I'm gonna go figure. I don't know why that sounded. I'm like I'm so patronising. <laughs> Excuse me, Andy. It's been lovely to talk to you today. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to speak to little on me about your time working on Parappa for the Rapper Two. Well, thank you. It's been my pleasure. Been Great. My pleasure. Where yeah. can people find you on social media if they want to check out your music? Uh, if the they go, just- um. For for my own stuff, if they go on Facebook, Andy Alonso Music, Alonso with an S, you know, because I I work a lot. As Not a Z, like it says and, in the credits. <laughs> exactly, Alonso with an S, Andy Alonso Music, and you know that's where I post if and when I do post stuff because I'm always traveling, busy working for people. But if they're somehow interested in what the old Colonel is up to, mm, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's where they can find me yeah. well that's great i'll link those in the description and with that being said thank you to you guys at home for watching this interview go check out Andy on social media and thank you for watching dearly stay safe stay happy be kind right, to yourself bye and cut mm-hmm.